Hey guys, in this video today we're going to look at how we can take a simple Flow Enterprise 2.5 project and actually implement that within a CSAD pipeline or cycle. And basically what this cycle is, it's just a using GitHub um, to store our different files. Then there will be a trigger or a hook that will basically build the project from those GitHub files anytime there's a new change um, with Jenkins. And then Jenkins will actually deploy that project onto EKS, which version of Kubernetes, um, Amazon's version of Kubernetes. So relatively simple, something that probably if you've looked at anything related to CICD or DevOps, um, that's the basis or the skeleton of what you are trying to do. And obviously there'll be other components added, but just to get a feel of exactly what we're trying to do and how this or how Flow Enterprise directly fits into that. So to start off, we have our application built. In this case, it's just a bookstore app. What I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to change this. So ISBN of book is, and then just some value. And so the reason why I'm changing this is I'm simulating, like if I am a developer making a change to an application that I previously built. So now I've made a change, a message log, me in the log message that makes it easy. Um, we're not changing anything else too dramatic. So what we're going to do is then export the JSON to this application, and then we can select where we want to export this. In this case, I'm going to export it into my local Git repository. So I'm going to change the name from Sample Bookstore to Flogo, and hit Save. So this will actually save that JSON file um, within that repository. So if I go to my terminal, I'll see that I have a JSON file called Flogo. And so the way that this application is going to be built out, it's going to be in two parts. So we have two Docker files, as you see. So let me just go through those really quickly. So the first one is Docker file engine. And so what this does is that it takes a Alpine image as the base image. It runs a few libraries um, to be installed into that. And then it adds the engine Linux AMD64 binary that's generated by the Flogo CLI um, within the Jenkins build. And so the reason why we do this is because what we want to do is we want to separate our the uh, the data within our applications and the different dependencies and activities and triggers that are actually needed for each app. And so th this can be done with using the engine binary is because all of those dependencies or all of those pre-existing triggers or activities are within the binary itself. And then any type of changes or anything that's different within the app is those configurations are stored within the JSON. And so if this is a little bit confusing, it'll make a little bit more sense when we go through this, but there's also a uh, getting started or a simple how-to video on this um, on the YouTube playlist. So I do suggest that you check that out. It's like five minutes long. It'll walk through it really easily, um, short video. So if you are confused or if you want to learn more about it, just feel free to watch that. So in this Docker file, we add that binary and then we just create an entry point for that binary itself. So that is the engine Docker file. So essentially we are creating a Docker image for the engine. And then we also have one for the app itself. So let me open that up. And basically what it does is that it takes the engine image that was created, it adds the JSON file that we just um, exported. So if you notice, flogo.json, and then it exports the port out that we're actually using for this application. So in this app, we're gonna use 9233. And so those two are needed in order to actually create our application um, Docker file. And then we also have a manifest file for when we deploy this onto Kubernetes. And so this is nothing special. If you've used Kubernetes before, you're very familiar with manifest files and the structure of them. There's nothing different on Flogo Enterprise projects. Um, you just basically just define what the image URL is for your Docker image or wherever it's stored in the repository. And then in this case, we also are gonna use a load balancer because we wanna be external facing. So I defined um, the target port for that as well. So quit out of that. And so I'm actually gonna push this. So and we see flowgo.json here. I'm gonna say um, add flowgo.json, commit it, and then push to origin. And so the way that I've set this up is that once that push has been made into Git, there's a hook that will then trigger an initial build onto Jenkins. So if I go to my dashboard, you should see that my base engine build has been starting to be built. So let me actually walk through that really quickly. So if I go to the configure stage, so what happens is essentially what it does, it's gonna export and source the environment variables within the system. It's then going to use the Flogo Enterprise CLI to build that base binary that I was talking about, basically that base engine. And then it's going to use the Docker file engine 
um, file to actually build that out into a Docker image called Flogo Engine, which we'll use in our app build. And so if you want to check out the logs for that build, you'll see that once you actually, when you create that base binary, it's going to tell you no Flogo application JSON specified. Flogo base engine binary will be built without embedded Flogo application JSON. And so the reason why we like to build apps like this is because you can reuse this base for any app that you built. Um, so it makes it very useful because now I've just had to build this binary once and then any other time that I make a change or any other time I build a new app, I just have to reference this binary within um, that build and I don't have to rebuild binaries over and over and over anytime I make changes or anytime that I have new apps and things like that. So I'm just calling upon this um, base binary. So that was completed successfully. So then the downstream project is the image build of the actual app itself. So let's look at the configuration of that. And in this case, what I do is that I just um, use the Docker file app, that file, to build the Docker image for the actual bookstore app. I then log into my ECR repository. So because I'm using Amazon EKS, ECR makes sense to use as my repository, but you could use anything, you could Docker Hub or Google Cloud or whatever. Um, I tag it and then I actually push it into the, the repository itself. So that's what this project does. And then it's going to trigger the Kubernetes deploy. So let me look at the logs really quickly. Console output. So if you notice um, from Flogo Engine, so this is from the pre previous project, it adds the JSON that we exported from our UI, exports the port, um, logs in, tags, and then pushes the actual application itself. And so then if I go to the Kubernetes deploy. This is just a relatively simple project. It's just going to run a kubectl apply of the manifest file that we had within our um, GitHub repository. So if we actually go to Kubernetes itself, let me refresh this. I might have to re-enter my credentials. Let me uh, copy and paste that token onto here. So we see that our bookstore app has been deployed and that there is a load balancer to actually be able to access this. So before we actually access this, let me just go through um, how this is set up on the Amazon side of things, maybe we're interested on that. So on EKS, I have two different nodes. So basically my Kubernetes cluster is made up of two nodes within uh, AWS. And then my Jenkins cluster or my Jenkins instance is just an EC2 instance sitting on AWS. And so this is a, a setup that you might have also within your organization where you are do all your develop locally and then you push out or all the builds are done within a remote instance or somewhere in either AWS, Azure, Google, wherever you have it um, in the cloud. And so that's what we're simulating here where we have Jenkins is running on this EC2 instance that is away from our local machine. This is where the build happens. This is where um, all of our images or our, the images that are built are stored and then we can obviously delete them afterwards. And that's all done away from our local machine. So it's trying to keep, it's trying to be built in a best practice type of way, something that simulates how you would have it built in your organization. So yeah, just going through that real quickly. So let's look at the external endpoint. So because this is a REST call, I need to add the call itself. So let me add that to there. And you'll notice that I get a response in this case. Um, if I go back to my Flogo Studio project, let me show you what the return should be. Well, for the message itself, it should be the title, the published date, and the description. So if we actually go back into this load balance call for this specific ISBN, you'll see that the description, published date, and title are here. So Java Web Service is up and running, and then it pulled out some information about that. So we're actually able to build our application out. We deployed it onto Kubernetes, and we're testing this API, um, or this endpoint was successful with this specific ISBN. And we can check the logs just to make sure. You'll see that the app has been starting successfully. And you'll see that ISBN book is, so that's that change we made. We added that is, um, and then the ISBN number, and then completed successfully. So we know our application is working fine. We got the result that we wanted. Our logs look OK. So everything that we've built out ha has been able to go through this process in a very easy way, where all I had to do was just make the commit into GitHub, and then my Jenkins project just kicked off. And so within the dashboard or Jenkins dashboard itself, you'll see that the setup is just three projects. And once again, the way that I, reason why I did this is because this base engine can be reused by any other Flogo type of project. So like I said, you build the base engine once, 
And if you have multiple, uh, multiple JSONs for multiple projects, all they have to do is use that base engine to actually build themselves. So you don't have to keep rebuilding binaries for each individual application. So you already have a base binary to use. So in that case, base binary, this is the app um, image build that will use that base binary and then the actual Kubernetes deploy as well. So that's a three-step process in this case, but it makes it a lot simpler from a CI/CD point of view just because if I had another project, let's say um, account service or customer service, something like that, it would just reference this base engine and we'd be good to go. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. Um, if, you, if there's anything um, that you're interested in, feel free to leave a message below. Maybe we can make a video on it. Also, we have some other videos within the playlist that break down some new features that have come out in the recent releases of Flipo Enterprise. So check those out as well. Thank you.